All right, everybody, I'm going to try and make a little video here of uh, setting up the E2 with the VESC controller. Um, after you get your controller installed, uh, the first thing you're going to have to do is install VESC tool on your phone. I think it's like $3.99 on the app, uh, on the App Store, and you can get it for Apple or Android. Um, you're going to hit the power button on your bike, make sure your battery is installed obviously, but hit the power button on your bike for one second. Unfortunately there's no feedback LED so press it for, and hold for one second and then wait for about five seconds or so. And then open up the VESC tool. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is just go ahead and hide this screen. Click this little gear icon and hit settings. And then this one at the bottom that says show firmware update message uncheck that because we're not going to update the firmware on the controller uh, and that message just gets annoying then we're going to hit connect uh, you can see mine is named you can set the name of your bike right here so every time you're on this page you'll know which bike is which um, and you can go ahead and hit connect and then the first thing we're going to do is set up motors. And I would say go ahead and hit no on this. Um, let me just select generic, hit next. I would go medium outrunner and hit next. The stock battery is 10 cells in series, and 9 amp hours is correct. And so then we're done on that page. We're going to hit next. Uh, I haven't counted the teeth on the actual planetary gears and everything, but what I do know is that the gear ratio is approximately a 4.1 to 1. So we're just going to type in 10 on the motor pulley and for 41 on our wheel pulley the tire diameter is approximately 400 millimeter and the motor pulls i believe is 18 and then for this next step it is going to spin up the motor so you're going to want to make sure that the tire is off the ground and you're going to hit run detection Now, if this spins the motor backwards, the tire won't actually spin because there's a one-way clutch in there. Um, don't worry about that. We're going to fix it in a future step. Okay, and then uh, pretty much the only thing I look at this page, honestly, is motor current is a 60 amps approximately. It's just a reasonable number, um, less than 200 and more than 5. Um, sensors, uh, you want it to say hall sensors there. If it doesn't, then there's something wrong with the connection. Maybe you need to rerun the motor detection, but we're going to hit OK. Now, if your motor was spinning backwards, this is where you can set and test that. So FWD for forward, you're going to click it and it should spin the motor forward. If the motor isn't spinning, then you're going to want to hit invert, hit forward again, and then your tire should spin. Mine, of course, is spinning the right way. I'm going to leave it like this. My tire is spinning the appropriate way, and I'm going to hit finish. Now we need to set up input. next we're going to click the one that says ADC input it looks like a motorcycle throttle and then when you're on this page you're going to twist your throttle and you should see that meter going up and then you're going to release your throttle 
and I like to do it just a couple of times. What's important on these E2s right here is that you do not spin them backwards. If you do, you will be required to spin them backwards to get the motorcycle to stop. So just go from the neutral position to full throttle and then back to the neutral position. And then you're going to hit apply and write. And then you'll hit next. Control type is current, use filter, safe start, that all looks good. Hit next. Um, so now the bike will work, but there's a handful of things I would suggest changing. First, let's go to our motor configuration. You just slide this menu over here. Go to motor configuration. Uh, we are first going to drop the second menu down to current. And let's raise this motor current all the way up to 95. Um, brake current doesn't matter because we got the one-way clutch on there and there is no motor braking. Uh, this maximum, absolute maximum current, we're going to raise to 180. Battery max current, we're going to drop down to 40. Okay, and that looks good on that page. Before I leave a page, I always hit right down here on the bottom left to make sure that it has it okay right on each page. Um, I think that's it there. Then we're going to go on the top menu there, the top drop down, and go to FOC. We're going to go to the bottom menu and go to field weakening and I have mine set at 90 amps so this is what's going to unlock a higher top speed while using the stock battery if you are living in that top speed range you're going to create a significant amount of heat in the motor but if you are racing and you are occasionally getting up to the top speed even up to 28 mile an hour is what we've seen it won't cause it to overheat if you're in that space for a short period of time. Um, however, if you're like riding on the highway and expecting to maintain 28 mile an hour for, you know, five miles or something, then it might create problems. Um, we haven't tested that, but I'm sure that that will be a problem. Um, anywhere. You know, you can go up to 90, you can set it to 50, you can play with this number a little bit right here, um, and just figure out where you're happy with it. But we've done uh, quite a bit of testing at 90 amps and not had any problems. Let's see. I think the next step we're going to go to app configuration. Hmm... Shut down mode. This is your sleep timer on the bike, and I do suggest you leave this on. Um, I actually would probably set it to after 10 minutes, um, and that is where if the bike is left with zero input, nobody's twisting the throttle or doing anything, the bike will automatically turn off after 10 minutes. Kill switch mode right here. Um, I'll have to double check this. Uh, I think I have it set up so you need to go to PPM low. We'll enable the kill switch. Let's test it real quick. So if I hit right, right now I have my kill switch on and I remove it. Yes, PPM low is how I set it up. If you don't want the kill switch, obviously, just go disabled. If you do want the kill switch, PPM low is, is the key. Okay, and then let's go to ADC. And this setting here, positive ramping time. 
This is how long it takes for the motor to actually get the desired amount of current. So if you snap the throttle to full throttle, it will take 0.3 seconds for it to actually apply the maximum 95 amps to the motor. Um, for racing, I just suggest setting this to zero. And, uh, and then hitting right. If the bike is jerky, uh, then you can increase that time and it'll make smoother operation on the bike. But if your intention is to have the most torque right away, setting this to zero seconds is going to be the best option. And I think that is it. Um, there's a throttle curve here. Um, if you want to play with that to have more control on the top or the lower end, um, I mean, that's probably a separate video. I think that's pretty much it for setting this thing up. Um, you know, at, at once we got the input done, you can twist the throttle and make sure the bike kind of moves forward a little bit. And, uh, you should be ready to go. Let me know if you have any questions.